Renault once ignored the needs of compact MPV buyers wanting seven seats. Now, arguably, they meet them better than anybody. Evidence comes in the shape of this second generation Grand Scenic. Practical, safe, quiet, comfortable, cheap to run and relatively affordable, it ticks a lot of boxes. Renault will tell you quite rightly that they know a thing or two about people carriers. But the truth is that they have themselves been taught a few MPV lessons by other brands over the years. Now, the French manufacturer certainly was the first to popularise the MPV concept. First in the 80s with the Espace for larger families and then in the late 90s with the more compact Scenic. Now, what they initially failed to appreciate, however, was that so many customers would want the larger model's seven-seater carrying capacity in a more compact, scenic-shaped package. And competitors like Vauxhall Zafira capitalised royally on this oversight until Renault belatedly put things right in 2004 with the first-generation version of this car, the Grand Scenic. Now, this may have been a delayed response, but at least it was an effective one. Instead of simply copying compact MPVs like the Zafira and others like Volkswagen's Turan and Toyota's Verso by cramming two extra seats in the boot suitable only for uh, kids or eunuchs, Renault did the job properly. The first generation Grand Scenic model uh, sat on a properly lengthened long wheelbase chassis and was 230 millimetres longer than the continuing five seat Scenic model. For the first time, properly plugging the gap between fully fledged seven seat people carriers and uh, mini MPVs designed little more as little more than uh, family hatchbacks with a dash of extra versatility. Renault had grabbed back the initiative in this market and was looking to continue that with the launch five years later of the second generation Grand Scenic model that we look at here. Now you approach an MPV measuring over uh, four and a half meters in length and with seven seats with certain expectations about how it's going to drive but it's worth giving the Grand Scenic the benefit of the doubt. Comfort of course is the overriding priority and rightly so but even allowing for that Renault have managed to engineer in a high degree of poise and maneuverability. With its suspension system lifted from the latest generation Megane this car resists body roll very well, and there's plenty of grip at the front end. Ride comfort is first class, the car tiptoeing over the poorest surfaces, and you don't get any of that wobbliness uh, over sudden undulations that some, uh, sometimes afflicts this type of car. Downsides, well, the gearbox isn't the slickest and the steering sometimes a bit light, but uh, that's about it, really. Uh, Renault has got the balance here, I think, just about right. To complete the job, it'll be down to you to make uh, the best engine choice. So let me give you a few pointers. Uh, best of the bunch when it comes to petrol power is the 1.4 uh, TCE uh, 140 brake horsepower turbo unit. Now this smooth engine is miles more responsive than the entry level uh, power plant, the 110 brake horsepower 1.6 VVT. So try and stretch to it if you can. This 1.4 can pull from as little as a thousand revs in fifth gear when you're coming out of a roundabout or when you're in urban traffic. So it's a very flexible engine and uh, it's certainly more powerful than the rest of 60 time of uh, 11.5 seconds would suggest. Still, even that reading is enough to make it a, a preferable option over the next petrol engine up in the lineup. That's a 140 brake horsepower, two litre unit, uh, which is irrelevant really, unless you need its automatic CVT gearbox. Okay, so what about the diesel choice? Well, if you're not likely to be using your Grand Scenic regularly, uh, fully laden with people, then the entry level 106 brake horsepower 1.5 DCI version might be all you need. If you're gonna be uh, using it fully laden with people on a regular basis though, I'd probably opt for the 1.9 DCI 130, or even better if you can stretch to the uh, flagship two liter DCI 160, that's the version that I'm driving here. Now this car has prodigious reserves of torque, about 380 newton meters of pulling power. That's enough to galvanize even a fully loaded Grand Scenic into instant action. And this variant really emphasizes what is this car's uh, strongest dynamic suit. 
its class leading and very impressive refinement. Now Renault has uh, put a great deal of effort into this, uh, building in felt and plastic into this car's floor with impressively quiet results. From the outside, this is a smart but not especially memorable design. But inside, the designer's efforts have been massively more successful. Let's check it out. The quality of materials leaps out at you with nicely executed minor controls and soft touch plastics everywhere that won't disappoint those used to more premium brands. Now the dashboard highlight for most owners will be this computer style multicolour screen with its digital speedometer and virtual rev counter. But more important is the way that this huge windscreen with its narrow pillars gives you a great view out. Now the seats are very comfortable too and I particularly like the way that these head restraints fold forward and then around weary heads for those lulled to sleep by the cosseting ride. As for practicality, well being very nearly as big as a Renault Espace, this Grand Scenic should be big inside and it is. Even so, uh, around four and a half meters of total vehicle length still isn't quite enough to take seven full-sized adults in long distance comfort, though you can get close with a few compromises. Now this second row of seats can slide forward either uh, collectively or individually. You can put the seats forward or backwards to emphasize uh, leg room for either second row or third row of passengers, though you can't get a compromise that gives both rows uh, ideal leg room. Mostly though, the majority of owners will probably choose to maximize second row leg room. Uh, even the center storage box can go backwards or forwards to help in this regard. And keep this third row of seating for uh, children or adults on shorter journeys. And talking of kids, the cabin is a triumph of child friendliness with seat back trays, uh, door pockets uh, big enough to hold a properly sized drinks bottle and around 40 uh, cubbies of storage areas dotted around the car including uh, front and rear floor mounted cubby holes and storage trays that slide out from under the front seats. As for luggage space, well as you might expect, there isn't a huge amount with the uh, third row of seating in place, just 208 litres. But you can easily extend this area by using the simple one-touch motion to fold these seats flat and increase the area to 564 litres. Now that's easily enough for, say, a couple of bags of golf clubs and a baby buggy. If you want more, yet still need to carry five passengers, you can slide this centre row of seating forward to free up up to 702 litres of space. If that's still not big enough, then the next step is to fold these seats forward against those at the front. And the final stage requires you to take them out completely if you've got space in your garage. Now, once you remove them entirely, you free up 2,063 litres of space with a total load length here of 2.5 metres. Now, since list prices suggest that you'll pay somewhere in the 15 to 25,000 pound bracket for your Grand Scenic, you might reasonably argue that the upper end of that bracket would uh, net you a fully sized uh, Ford Galaxy or Renault Espace shaped large MPV. To that, the answer is, as Renault have discovered, that many people only want occasional seven-seater capacity and dislike having to cart around transit van-like dimensions every day of the week. Now, at first glance, Renault seems to have priced this car comparably to its closest rival, Citroen's C4 Grand Picasso. But look again, and you might find that uh, choosing this Grand Scenic nets you a useful saving on some key variants, including the entry-level diesels that tend to be most popular. Now, in terms of other compact MPV rivals, only Peugeot's 5008 offers a properly lengthened seven-seater body. Others, like uh, Toyota's Verso, Volkswagen's Turan, or uh, Vauxhall's Zafira, claim to suit seven, but squash all of those seats into one standard body shape. 
Renault asks a premium around £1,500 from buyers wishing to graduate from their five-seater Scenic compact MPV to this seven-seater Grand Scenic model, the two cars sharing most of the same engines. Now, you might automatically think diesel here. There's a 106 brake horsepower, one, uh, 1.5 DCI, a 1.9 DCI 130 horsepower unit, or this uh, top of the range 160 brake horsepower, two litre DCI engine. But don't ignore the very impressive 140 brake horsepower, 1.4 litre TCE turbo petrol engine far superior to the other 1.6 VVT 110 brake horsepower or 2 litre 140 brake horsepower petrol options. In terms of equipment, all models get uh, front electric windows, uh, a rear wiper that functions automatically when you select reverse, air conditioning and an MP3 compatible CD stereo. But what about safety? Well, that's even more important. This car comes with stability control, ABS with brake assist, front, side and curtain airbags. Uh, you get Isofix uh, child seat mountings on all three of the middle row seats. And it gets an impressive independent corroboration from Euro NCAP. In their tests, this car scored the full 37 points to give it a five star rating for adult occupancy crash protection. What the Grand Scenic's entry-level diesel engine lacks in outright pace, it makes up for by creating in this car one of the most fuel-efficient seven-seater vehicles that money can buy. The um, 1.5 litre DCI 106 unit uh, enables this Renault to return a combined fuel consumption figure of 55.4 miles to the gallon and a CO2 reading of uh, 134 grams per kilometre. Now that's better than uh, the kind of figures you get from some of the eco-special models that Rival makes uh, will offer onto the market. The uh, 130 brake horsepower 1.4 TCE petrol version deserves a special mention too. Um, it achieves figures of 168 grams per kilometre of CO2 and close to 40 miles to the gallon on a regular basis. The, even the um, top of the range uh, DCI 2 litre 160 engine, which is a pretty powerful unit, uh, returns 42.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and CO2 figures of 173 grams per kilometre. The issue of residual values is a trickier one for Renault. Expect this car to return between uh, 25 and 30% of its original value after three years or 36,000 miles. What else might you need to know? Well, uh, insurance groupings range between uh, five and 10. Uh, you get a three year, 60,000 mile warranty. And if you're interested, uh, about 14% of the plastics used in this car come from recycled material. Now, you might think that your day-to-day -day family car journeys are mind-bogglingly dull but there are numerous models on the market locked in ferocious competition to come along for the ride. If your brood needs day-to-day -day room for five and occasional space for seven, here's one of the best of them. Other rivals might be trendier, but none are more practical than this grand scenic where it counts inside or nicer to live with over long journeys. On top of that, build quality is strong, uh, running costs are low and safety is outstanding. Overall then, a car that shows Renault with its finger firmly on the pulse of what modern families are looking for. French sense, that's about the size of it.